welcome friends to the second and final day of our two day event in toronto canada i am very happy to see you today my happiness to be in canada increased yesterday when i read an article that out of all the 160 countries of the world in terms of which is the happiest country Canada stood number two immediately after Switzerland. The United States was way down. No comment on the United States. The people are happy here is a great thing. When you are happy, everybody around you can be happy. Happiness spreads. Not by language. Language is very limited. what i spoke yesterday your ears all your ears heard the same thing now i make a startling statement that every one of you understood something differently is it strange that the ears heard the same thing and we all understood differently why is that because language is a very limited means of communication where does language come from any language spoken language uses the sounds from the voice box in the throat in the mouth it is a voice box that generates with the lungs the sound and then we convert the sound into words and words have very very limited meaning because words only mean what we have experienced with those words when a baby is born and is shown a small chair where he will sit when he grows up his whole idea of the word chair is a small place he can't think of any other chair grows up he sees other chairs people are also calling chair the word chair expands to include more chairs as we grow up we see still more chairs but no two people have seen the same total chairs at all therefore it's a combination of the chairs we have seen that means what chair is when we say chair the combination comes into our mind and gives us the meaning of chair the understanding of chair no two people sitting here have seen the same chairs in their life no two people can have exactly the same idea what a chair is when the word chair is used chair can be seen so when many of us see similar chairs the meanings can come very close to each other but when we talk of things that we haven't seen the meanings can differ a lot when we say love it means different things to everybody when we say jealousy means something everybody's experience of jealous people their own jealousy comes up as never two are identical these phonetic symbols are all giving meaning to us from their association of ideas with our experiences no two people have the same experience therefore no two people have the same meanings of language that is why i made the startling statement your ears heard the same words and everybody understood it differently depending upon their idea of what those words mean that i spoke this is very big limitation that means if i say something to somebody i am understanding what i am saying i have a meaning for what i say other person with the same words understanding something else no two people can communicate with words accurately but there is unspoken words also which we never speak sometimes they call it body language baby smiles and we smile no words are spoken we have communicated with the baby no language has been used its body language we use body language more than spoken language in our life but we don't realize that is really more important 
than spoken language, it does not have as much limitation as the limitation of phonetic symbols like words. Therefore, when we speak, we have something to say. We put it into words. The words go across as something different, maybe slightly, maybe more, is understood by the person. Not only that, in the physical world, we have developed totally different symbols for different territories of this Earth, planet Earth, we call countries, cultures, language cultures. Somebody has been brought up speaking English language, he can't understand German, can't understand French, can't understand Hindi, can't understand Punjabi, just because the phonetic symbols are different. You can keep on talking, but you don't understand it. But there is something, a language, which seems to go straight somewhere beyond our understanding and beyond our ears, and that is the language of love. When we experience love, no words are spoken, nor are they necessary, nor does the mind even try to understand because when you try to understand love, love disappears, it appears. It appears that there is something, a different connection that makes us speak through love. Silent communication, completely silent, and it can affect us. What, did, what happened when we used to go to Great Master? We just sat there, no words, and we felt something. Very deep more deep than a lecture we could hear. So that was something that was not spoken, not heard, silent, but it was understood by the soul, not by the mind. That is why there is spiritual communication, which does not need words at all. And that spiritual communication is the main communication with a perfect living master. Of course, other languages change with spiritual progress. For example, at the astral plane, where we don't have these bodies, no voice boxes, we have sense perceptions. When we try to talk, it's not a voice like we speak here. It is as if our imaginative words are coming forth. They are not spoken like this. But they are spoken because we think we have spoken. Supposing you were to just imagine, I have said certain words by imagination. You can hear the words, not with these ears. In your imagination, you can speak the words, also hear them. This imaginative conversation is a reality at the astral plane. That is why when we communicate, even if we try to say something with our words in that astral body, Another person is understanding it not from the spoken word, but from what we meant to say. Sometimes a surprise for people who have done meditation. That somebody is a seeker from Germany, does not know English. Somebody is from England and does not speak German. At the astral plane, they communicate very easily. One says something in English, other person understands Germany. There is no translator being used. The reason for that is that what is intended to be said is being conveyed, not the words that are being used to what is intended to be said. So that is why language changes. This experience, astral experience of being able to communicate what you want to say is called telepathic communication. Just like other experiences people sometimes have here, people sometimes feel they have an outer body experience. Sometimes they feel that the imaginary body was more real. Sometimes they have flashes of light. Sometimes people see everything has been brightened up. These are not physical experiences. They are astral experiences suddenly having a glimpse of them in the physical plane. Similarly, some people have this sudden experiences of telepathic communication at physical level. It's not happening at physical level. 
But the surprising thing to notice is that even when it happens at physical level, a person thinking what to say to another person in English is understood by the other person who does not know English, only knows German, even here. Telepathy is always conveying what you want to say, not what you say. So that is normal method of communication there. But this is astral plane where we can still communicate through astral sense perceptions that we still feel we are saying something, we are hearing something. We can still describe it. Some yogis and sadhus have said that the astral plane is difficult to describe. They described it with the words neti, neti. That means not this, not this, it's not this. We can't compare whether nothing we are seeing here is there. And yet everything that is there is here. How do you explain that? That nothing that is here is there. For example, everything we see here is physical matter. There is no physical matter there at all. Everything we explain to people is in language, spoken language. There is no such thing there. We are bothered about traveling with our bodies. They are heavy. We, this body can't fly. And there all the bodies fly. Even this little description I am giving to you is not completely accurate, but just trying to use a physical assembly. Because you can understand flying, birds fly, so I can say you can fly. But there flying is a natural thing, it doesn't look like flying. It looks like normal means of transportation. So that is why it's very difficult. And that's why the yogis and the sadhus who get there describe it as not describable. If you go still higher, you will discover something totally different, indescribable. When I try to describe it, I must confess I make stories. I have to make stories. I'm not the only one who made stories. All mystics, all people who have studied spirituality have made stories. I'm not a very great storyteller, but there are great storytellers. I mentioned to you how my master's master was Jamal Singh, Baba Jamal Singh. His master was Sri Shivdyal Singh, Swamiji of Agra. And Swamiji describes the highest regions. He said, in the highest regions, there are tall trees. Of course, he didn't say there is no space and time, because we can't understand that. He described tall trees several miles long, laden with rubies and diamonds, jewelry. I understand most of the audience was ladies at that time. So rubies and jewels on a tall tree meant so much for the audience. A way of describing a story. Everybody told stories because we could only understand what could be similar to what we experience here. So all these stories that we tell about the higher regions are just for our understanding that there is a difference and the difference is remarkable and difference makes us have a great experience. The greatness of experience, what is great about it cannot be described. So that is why we don't have any proper words to describe. If we go to the causal plane, the best explanation I can give or description I can give is that we do not have matter in our self, in our body. Here you can imagine a body, no physical matter and no physical sense perceptions. No eyes, no ears, no tongue, no nose to smell, no hand to touch. I don't know if you can understand. I am very happy to have that. If I say from this point of view, what a bad, sad thing, we lose everything. Not really. All these functions that the physical body is performing, all the functions that sense perceptions are performing, are all performed by that body with no matter, no sense perceptions. And what is that body? Are we experiencing it now? We have to, otherwise we would be dead. 
दैट बॉडी इज कॉल्ड एट दिस टाइम और माइंड वी थिंक इज जस्ट ए फंक्शन ऑफ द ब्रेन जस्ट ए फंक्शन ऑफ ब्रेन टू थिंक वी डोंट नो मच अबाउट द ब्रेन we don't know much about the mind we don't know what happens if the brain and the soul alone were functioning we don't know what we can experience it through meditation we can go to a state where only mind exists made a living mind by the soul i be technically call it karan sharir causal body because that self of ours is still having a covering which in terms of our physical language would be called a body so we call it a causal body one that causes all things to happen nothing is happening in the three worlds that is not caused there nothing at all so the soul the life force creates an instrument which is our body a causal body the mind that is able to create all lower levels of experiences by going into somewhat like dream states i can't call it dream state because dream is not real by creating levels of reality that's i would that's a better description that we never create illusions we create reality every level that you will experience while you are in that level will be absolutely real if you say this is not real only pinch yourself poke a little needle and you say it is real if you can't do it i'll do it for you and make it real for you this is a reality that we experience i remember a friend of mine who was a partner of mine in business we decided to celebrate our success by a trip to hawaii it was a big thing we were told it's paradise at least there is a, it's a paradise island and i said if there is a paradise on earth why go to astral plane to look for it so we went to hawaii and we rented a car a nice car and decided to go all around the island of oahu where honolulu is situated and i'm driving no no i'm not driving i didn't drive much my friend is driving as he is driving he says he sure i understand this is not real i don't have to put my hands on the steering wheel it's just not real it'll go i said please stop and let me out <laughs> you can't apply the rules of some other level from where you will find it's not real into a reality that in which we are living these are realities all the laws that apply to a particular reality apply all the time while we are there and because we have to make sure the reality remain the real we cut ourselves off from all realities no matter how much progress we make on the spiritual path no much how many things we have seen people have visits to the astral plane they are absolutely sure this is more real this is not physical buildings are shining people are all shining light is shining from them things are so different we can fly they have that great experience and then they come back from meditation and ask me was it real or what did the mind make it up i said what did you think there absolutely real don't you believe now no we have to question why question because you are in this reality everything else is unreal when you come back to this reality people have a problem even understanding and accepting something that they knew was more real when they were there so that is why each level has its complete elements of reality so when you have a higher reality you don't mostly remember most of it i think i told you the incident of a friend of mine who said in the astral plane can we see tomorrow i said yes you can astral plane you can move on time 
if not properly at causal plane you can move very easily on tomorrow's and yesterday's just like the scientists are saying time space is one unit but they can't experience it here there you can experience it that's just like a move in space go this side and come back on time you can go this side and this back very a very normal experience at the causal plane he said if i meditate hard and go there can i see the lottery number <laughs> 60 million coming tomorrow i said you can wonderful now i'm sure of winning the lottery and he meditated hard with some grace because of his special wish and desire able to see the numbers the winning six numbers and he said this is so real i am seeing the lottery being drawn and the number being drawn and he came out of meditation what were the numbers <laughs> within seconds how could i forget them? and he waited can i remember what numbers i should buy and he bought several tickets two numbers he was very sure and next day lottery came two numbers were on all the tickets he bought and none of the other numbers when he saw the numbers he remembered immediately oh these were the numbers i saw why couldn't i remember earlier now understand why that happened that happened because it was a very clear reality but it erases itself it erases itself when you come to another reality it almost becomes unreal we when you accept one reality you have to question if the other was real or not that is why in the wakeful state people have experiences are still not sure if they were dreams or they were real experiences they are real experiences i'll give you a little hint our normal dreams when we go to sleep take place by our attention going down the attention what i call the notional point of consciousness which is third eye center is third eye center bit at the middle of the head only in the wakeful human state not all the time when you go to sleep that notional point where you believe you are working from where you believe your eyes are begins to drop it begins to drop as you feel sleepy it's around the level of the nose when you are very sleepy can't wake up goes down to the throat when you're dreaming yes when yogis do great samadhi of the lower chakras it can also go down further sometimes it goes all the way down to the sixth lower center sometimes it stops at the heart some have taken it to the nabi or the, or the belly belly button area but the notional point where the self is is self being felt in those areas in the body but because we are sleeping we are not aware of the body that is why we do not know we are still alive still alive in this body but we do not know where we are operating from and what is our notion of our eyes we have a very clear notion that the eyes are top part of the body in the in the face just below the forehead we have clear idea where the eyes are with closed eyes you can say where the eyes are these very location of the eyes which look they get lower down with the notional point where you are operating from supposing tonight just test out when you are about to sleep try to do something that you can easily do now you can easily touch your eyes with your eyes closed no problem everybody can know where the eyes are eyes are closed these are my eyes the tactical sense is completely connected with the sense of where the eyes are now when you are sleepy try to touch your eyes you will touch below and think you are touching the eyes notional point is only going when you are only half asleep 
in full sleep it goes further down in dream state it goes here it fluctuates between the eyes and this place during moments of no dreaming if you are a meditator of the six centers have been a yogic practitioner for a long time it fluctuates between the heart and the throat so it all depends this notional point shifts and changes so that is why when we go down and come up and wake up what we have experienced here in the dream becomes unreal so fast it does not remain reality for more than 30 seconds according to studies sometime only 5 seconds 5 seconds i had a dream i just forget what was it last more last part of it i can recall unless the dream is very exciting traumatic you fall into a well you fell from an aeroplane in a dream you wake up i i that was terrible thank god it was a dream i felt i fell from an aeroplane i felt i fell into a well the traumatic dream or a dream that i had once a very wonderful dream that i had won a lottery not 60 million 5 million it was very exciting and they asked me do you want a check or do you want cash i said i have never seen 5 million in cash check in the paper i want cash so they managed to bring so many bills and so on as they were going to deliver i woke up i tried very hard to go to sleep again <laughs> at least to collect it can you imagine for a few seconds i was taking the dream to be so real i said worth while going there to collect it but within seconds it disappeared and it was just a dream there was no lottery and there was no winning so that is why i am mentioning to you what happens at different levels you awake but while you are still in a physical body having these experiences your reality comes back to the physical body and they may look like dream like or you can't be sure but the dream itself is absolutely real it's not a dream the hint i was going to give you is that most of these dreams that take place are either of what you have been thinking just before sleeping or some events of the day which are still carried by you at night or some events of the day which are making you plan something for the next day they are very mundane disease mundane sleep dreams which are just created by your daily experience some dreams are very unusual and they contain some colors which ordinary dreams don't the color blue and yellow does not occur in ordinary dreams most dreams have a buff color like the color of the skin it's a pinkish color reddish pinkish color the whole dream people are in that color we don't notice till we wake up you can remember next time you can check it out that there is more or less different shades of single color most of our regular dreams in some dreams we may see some other colors but when we see bright beautiful rainbow on a field of yellow flowers and a blue sky is not a physical dream those dreams come and in those dreams we can also see things which are actually part of the overlap of the physical and the astral and they look amazing to us and then we think maybe we have been reading too many books about them therefore they have come no consciousness can slip but in those dreams consciousness does not go to the throat it goes behind the eyes most of the time we think eyes if at that time in that dream in that dream body you could say i want to touch my eyes you touch the eyes these hands will be beyond the physical eyes in that body these are all little little experiences that if you are serious meditators you can all have these experiences of course most of us are not serious meditators most of us take meditation as an opportunity to do something good maybe for the future maybe after life after death 
So we are so busy with our important things. Important things to feed ourselves, to live properly, make money, provide for a house, provide for food, shelter, clothing, provide for families, provide for other th- and so many obligations to work and so much mind is occupied with work. Where do we have time for meditation? Imagine what is our approach to meditation. We think it's just a side business. Just something we can do and it will be beneficial sometime. And then masters confuse us even more by saying, actually it's all grace, master's grace. And we say, forget about meditation, all master's grace. So we live our normal lives taking this reality to be the only reality. That's how we live, most of us. Even on the spiritual path we live that life. It's very few people who say, this is temporary. Let me as soon as possible find that which is permanent. And they are the serious meditators. They take meditation seriously. They take the master seriously. And they know master inside. They experience it. Anybody who does serious meditation will experience it. We talk so much about the radiant form of a master. Books talk of it. Masters talk about it. And people are waiting to see the radiant form of a master. I saw one disciple, he had come from another country, sitting in front of great master. I was sitting next. Master is sitting in in front. He's closing his eyes. And I am wondering, What is he trying to see? His own totality, his own self, the true home, God himself, sitting in front of him in a human form. He's closing his eyes to see something imaginative. Who is he seeing? It is because the master is just a teacher who told me, find the radiant form inside. Even in the presence of the master, he's trying to find the radiant form inside. He doesn't know. It's the radiant form that's sitting outside. It's the astral form, the causal form, the spiritual form, the total form sitting in the body, right here. If we knew even this much, our whole relationship with the master would change. Having been accepted by such a master, every word of his would mean so much. But we don't take it like that. Why? This is our reality. The rest we don't know. Therefore, serious meditators get to know these things by meditation and they have a master with them inside 24-7. I asked master once, very early on, master, if I get the radiant form of yours inside, then I need not come to you He said, you decide when you get it. I said, why should I decide you are telling Andy in all your discourses? The radiant form of the master is more real. Radiant form of the master will take you inside. Outside master will die like you will die. Then why should you tell me, wait and see? Because he said, if you see, the radiant form of the master, you will know is the same master. If you can see him in meditation, you can see him outside in physical form, in the physical reality. You will like to see the physical form even more of seeing the radiant form. We do not know that the physical form is carrying awareness of the top, of the highest. And therefore, we have no idea who the master is. We just take him somebody enlightened, somebody who can tell us something, somebody who can teach us something. He's total. We are part of him. He's part of us. Very difficult to understand. Great master used to say, it's very difficult to understand how a drop can be an ocean and the ocean can be a drop. The example he gave is, 
a little seed of an oak tree. Can you believe the whole oak tree is in that seed? In this world, we have to put the seed in the soil, water it, feed it, and then it becomes a big tree, slowly. Why does it become slowly? Because of time. Now think of it, push the time to zero, the oak tree and the seed are the same. That's the truth about the drop in the ocean. That's the truth about our being here in total. That's the relationship. It's very difficult to understand that the whole thing is together. And that is why we are in a world of time. We always wait for things to happen at a time. We wait for things to grow. And we do not fully understand what we are looking for. The ultimate we are looking for, ultimate we are looking for as spiritual seekers sitting right in front of us and the man had eyes closed. Amazing thing. It's a very difficult concept for the mind to understand that the totality can sit in a physical body here. We don't know what a master is. We can't explain what a master is. We gradually come to know a master in time. Everything then gets designed to be in time. A person says, I'm seeking very much. I want radiant form now. Time says, no, then we can't help it. We are in time. I get so many emails. I want the radiant form ASAP. <coughs> I said ASAP means after 10 years. <laughs> Why? That's when it's placed on timeline. Then another very big mistake people make. <coughs> Excuse me. They think the radiant form of the master will be slightly different from the form they see in the physical form. Where has that mistake crept form? From the word radiant. Radiant in our common understanding means shiny. So many people I have asked, what do you believe the radiant form will look like? They see a lot of light coming out of it. A lot of light shining out of it. I said, how did you make that? He saw a picture, a painting. Somebody made a painting, a radiant form of the master. And the master's face was the same, which we see here on earth. But there was light shining like this coming out of the body. I said, I'm sorry. You'll be greatly disappointed when you see the radiant form. No sparks of light will be flying like that. But one thing will be there. You will be able to see the master in utter darkness. Isn't that radiant enough? Not only that, when you will look at yourself, you will be as radiant as the master. It just happens to be a nature of the astral plane that everything can be seen without light. In fact, there is always some light, but even if you create darkness artificially, everything can be seen. Therefore, it's called radiant. There are radiant buildings, radiant streets, radiant libraries, radiant places to work, radiant factories. They're all radiant and radiant master. So to think that there is something exceptional shining there, which we say is the radiant form of the master, that's a misconception. So that is why it is to our head picks up this word radiant and expects something different. People are imagining their master, talking to the master, seeing master every day, waiting for the radiant form. That is the radiant form. Non-physical form is radiant form. If you see it here, if you see it in a dream, it looks more like the dream state. If you see in a wakeful state, it's more like the wakeful state. If you see in astral, sub-astral, astral overlap state, it's astral state. It doesn't mean 
that there is a unique form of the master that you see. People tell me, is it very difficult to find the radiant form? I say, not at all. If you see a person and want to imagine the face of that person, we have the capacity. We have enough imaginative capacity to imagine the face. When we imagine the face, is it the radiant form? No, it's the imaginative form. When the radiant form comes, will it be different than your imaginative form? Not really. How will you know it's imaginative or not? Imagination in the physical plane is a function of the physical mind. The function of the physical mind is to imagine something that looks unreal compared to the physical. That's the nature of the state. We go one step higher to the astral plane. A imagination by the astral mind creates reality. You can imagine anything, it will become real at the astral plane. It, your whole definition of imagination will change. Some people say, I don't want to imagine a master, I want real master to come. How will you know real master has come or not? What's the difference? When you will see something, say you will see the master, how will you know it's a radiant form of the master or not? Are you imagining it or is it real? This has a question bothering many people because they think it will be something very extraordinary and different. It is not. It is just according to the state in which you are. We are in physical bodies here. We go and see a physical master. We are in astral form. We see a radiant master. The causal form, we see the master with no form, like ourselves. Master is always in the same form in which we are. The truth is always in the same form in which we are. Therefore, we can't apply rules of another level to another level lower or higher level. Rules are different for each level. Dreams even, which we have all the time, as lower part of our experience than the physical level, you see the rules there are different. The time and space in the dream is completely different. You can have a dream in which you see an old castle. You go into a new place just to see the ruins of old civilizations. And you see old castle. You ask the guide, how old is it? This is about 2000 years old. How far does it go? It goes several miles long. Okay, that's interesting. 2000 years ago, what kind of people lived here? Your dream tells you all that. He describes, you can see and you wake up. The whole dream took three minutes. In three minutes you created two thousand years. And those two thousand years looked real. These three minutes were forgotten. We woke up, see the clock, three minutes. Which was real? Two thousand years that you actually experienced or three minutes that the wakeful body is now saying it experienced. This is different rule. Okay, in a dream, you can be in Toronto talking to somebody, suddenly you're in Montreal talking to somebody, in second. Look completely natural. You will in a dream never ask, how did I jump from Toronto to Montreal in one minute? You never ask that. Very natural, it just happened. The rule of the time flowing is totally different in a dream than in wakeful state. I am just comparing something that you all have and many of you remember. Talk of the astral plane, rules are different. You can't even think of those as reality. That you can see tomorrow, it's not possible here. That is the causal plane, you can see all the yesterdays. Not for two days, five days, for one million years and remember it. It is impossible to think of it here. It's just a common thing there. Absolutely common. Just like we are sitting here, it's just a common thing to come and sit in a hall. 
same thing there the rules of each level of consciousness the rules of each level of reality are different and they look completely normal when we are there they look very abnormal very unusual if you are here that is why the radiant form of the master is not what we are expecting a physical pictures or imagination or being told what it is it is the same master we see here but he can be seen in utter darkness because that's why we call him radiant that means there is a light in all of us at the astral plane and more light at the higher planes in fact some saints and mystics could not describe the higher regions and they use the element of light as an expression of what is high i have seen a description given and you, i can refer them to those descriptions of the highest regions there here we can't see one sun in the astral plane whole sky is lit, lit up and we think it's dark not too light in the causal plane we can see a golden sky sky golden orange little dark gold sky if you have seen a setting sun in the physical plane when you see setting sun can be seen sun high up is too bright for our eyes to see but setting sun we can all see it turns from that white brightness to golden color when it sets also it become little bigger something scientists are puzzled with you know why they are puzzled can normally things that go further become smaller if we if we see a man walking in distance he is small he ride aeroplane these cars look so small at the bottom the distance creates smallness when the sun is setting it's more distant from the earth from the planet than when it's on the top it looks bigger when it's setting smaller when it's closer so it's is the opposite rule they still trying to determine why the explanation they are giving is interesting they say just for your information they say the setting sun looks bigger because we are not looking at the sun the sun has already set and by diffraction we are seeing an image of it the refraction is creating the expansion of the image therefore the setting sun is not the real sun that's smaller but we are seeing a refraction which become little bigger because of the working of the space or the air here as a lens so these are explanations but you have seen the setting sun now supposing the setting sun golden color little dark golden color you stretch that sun all over the sky you can't stand that sun if it came here like that no matter it's setting or not it's too bright it's a normal sky at the causal plane that means the light the ability to see more light with inner bodies increases that is why many mystics many saints have used the concept of more light to describe higher regions what do they write oh your own soul above the mind has the light of 16 of these suns exact number they have given put 16 suns of the physical world together that the light coming from a single individual so individual soul there is no time space there but description has to be given to show the brightness of consciousness the brightness of how consciousness can have so much generated experience can generate so much experience including a mind including universes they can't say in these terms and explain it is 16 sunlight how do you go higher they have described in some states trillions of suns put together decillions of suns put together is the light of that place they all described there so much light there when i first heard that that's all we are going to see in the higher planes trillions of suns i said not worth while it will be too light i won't feel, see my friends there i thought differently this is just a description it's not accurate there's no word accurate accurate word at all to describe the nature of consciousness 
the nature of the power of consciousness. There is no word to describe the total, not only nature of the power of consciousness, the function of consciousness at different levels. No language exists. Go and see, you try to find any language. There is no language. Therefore, we are using these similes. Very big light, which is something very different from here. That's all they're trying to say. So that is why, if you see your own causal self with all the abilities to create, with all the abilities not to think, imagine and make it real, to create imagination, it's a big thing. Your causal body can create any imagination anywhere. There's still space and time. See the trillions, now again I'm using exaggeration to impress you. See the trillions of universes your mind can create, your causal body can create in a second in the causal plane. How else can I describe? Who am I talking about? Yourself. Myself. The self. This is the power of the self. If you discover the self, you discovered everything. If you discover total self, you discovered the creator. And imagine how lucky we are, how unusual this luck is. That sitting in human bodies, confined to human physical plane, we have the ability to have all these experiences within ourselves, to go nowhere. We don't have to run anywhere. These are all within ourselves. And it is not that somebody can give you this. Nobody is born to give you a higher plane of consciousness. Not even a master. And not even a perfect living master. You are born with that stuff inside you, including the perfect living master. Nothing is outside. Everything has to be found from within yourself. What is the shortest cut you could think of to any place? The spiritual experience is the shortest cut to all discoveries and all knowledge. And yet, we ourselves have put ourselves out from that knowledge, put ourselves out from one experience to another, covered ourselves with more blankets, blanket of the mind, blanket of the senses, blanket of the body, you say, what a beautiful world we are living in, except it we should not be suffering here. What has happened to us? Did we make a mistake? Was it a blunder to put all these blankets on? Not at all. It was the wisest thing consciousness could do to appreciate itself. In its original state of total consciousness, it created the opposite of it and greater, greater appreciation of its own original state. Somebody says, what was the purpose of creation? What was the purpose of creation that has so much suffering in it? Purpose is very clear. If there is no suffering anywhere, you will never know there is no suffering unless you see suffering. Consciousness operates like that. Even here. A rich man who had never seen any riches, do you know he committed a murder? But then the judge heard, the true story of United States, your neighboring country, the judge heard he had never seen the kind of poverty, suffering which people have, never saw. He didn't think there was anything wrong. He said, I acquit him because of his affluence. He had never seen poverty, so I quit him. The boy had never knew what affluence was. He had never seen poverty at all. We are experience everything in this created world in pairs of opposites. There would be no awareness of light if there was no darkness. Supposing a certain amount of light like we are seeing now was there 24-7, unchanged. Nobody would have ever known it exists. The word light would not have come into being in any language. It's the darkness 
that gave us knowledge of the light. If there was no pain, pleasure would cease to have the same meaning. If there's no pleasure, there would be no pain. If only one state exists, it is not experienced till the opposite is created. This is a world of duality and plus and minus, negativity and positivity. Everything is placed like that here. Posit positrons and electrons start from the beginning. It's all the time, every particle of it, the smallest particle, till the biggest galaxies, is all based on pairs of opposites. The question is, is there an opposite, also a pair of opposite in our true home? Sorry, there's none. Then how do we really experience it? We experience it because we have created the opposite of its idea. There's no opposite somewhere. We create an opposite and make it more appreciated, more experienced. It's very difficult to believe the concept that consciousness should create an opposite of its original state in order to experience what it is. Raison the earth for all creation. Does it mean, I'm going further for those who are studying philosophy, does it mean that if there was no opposite, we would have no experience of a true home? Can you imagine? The answer will be yes. Does it mean that creation has always been here? The answer is yes. The creator consciousness is together and when you reach there, you find they are the same. What we think is creation is the part of the creator, is the creator. Therefore, it's very difficult to understand. We are, as so many in a vast, vast world, part of the creator, right now, never separated. There's no separation, really. We had to create separation. Not difficult. Just shut your eyes here and say there are many. Total con consciousness did a simple thing. Okay, I'll cut my experience of totality and make the many, and then I will not look at the one, the many are real. Put the many, it's time with the minds drawn from another little source called the universal mind and let them be together in the universal mind and make the many in the mind there we have a different mind, space and time. Everybody thinks it's my separate space and time. So easy to create experiences. Experiences of what? Experiences of creation and creator. Therefore, even sitting in time, like we're sitting here, we have arranged this time to be a temporary time. It's not real. It's not original, it's a creation. By creating time, we put everything on it, including our real self, which we just cut off from us. Because if we remember it, there's no time. By cutting off, time is real. Can you imagine, in this state where we are living, time is the only reality. Everything else will go away. Time will not. No way. The only immortal thing here is time. We are all mortal. Why? Supposing time dies, what will be there after that? Some kind of time. Can we imagine something with no time? If you can, you have reached the higher region already. If somebody can, sitting here, imagine a state of being, in which there is no time, he is talking from a higher level. You cannot even imagine that. Such a big limitation. I'll tell you a little secret. This immortal time, infinite time, does not exist even for us here. Why? Because we live in now. Have you, is anybody living not in now? We are all living in now, all the time. Now never goes away. We are living in now, 
and not in any other time. We are not living in the past. It's already gone. We are not living in the future. It's still to come. We are living in the now. The absolute present. Why do we call it absolute present? Because otherwise when I use the word present, you think of some time. There's the present time, there's past time, there's future time. I say absolute present, which has no time. At all. Can you ever, have you ever imagined that we are living in a now which is timeless? Not even a billionth part of a nanosecond. Now has no time. Anything prior to now is past. Anything past now is future. There is no now in time. But there is a now in experience. Because we are all living in now. How can that be? How can it be that we are all experiencing time and there is no time in the now in which we are living? This is physical time I am talking of, physical life. How can that be? Very simple. What we call now is immediate past. Because there is no time in now. When I say I am speaking to you in the present, what I said before I said was future, after I said was past, there was no now in it. This was past or future, not present. So if present is zero time, we are experiencing time, how was it created like this? How can you create an experience of time when you are experiencing in no time? I am telling you the origin of this whole experience here, physical experience. You create it by the past. Future we don't know. Past we know. Because it just happened. Well, something is in the past. Can you experience it now? No. The experience itself will always be in the past. It's a little difficult concept, but I want to say to you that when we are experiencing time, which we call present or now, it's the past. There is no way for human consciousness to recall the past except through memory. Memory means remembering what happened in the past. If it happened a second ago, you remember quickly. You remember two hours ago, it looks far away. Few days ago, further away. Few years ago, further. We push it away into the past. But when we push it a few seconds away, still looks the present. What we call now what we call present is merely the past of a few seconds, few minutes, and that is a memory of the past. Now, I've used a very good word, memory, because we all use it. I remember that. My memory is poor now. I can't remember that. Memory is a common word. It's not as common as you think. We are creating our present through memory. Therefore, memory cannot happen if nothing has happened, and nothing can happen in now, how can we have a memory? Our understanding of memory is something should happen, we can remember it. If nothing can happen in now because there is no time, then what are we remembering? Where did it come from? Examine carefully. If nothing can happen in now because of lack of time, and all happenings are in time, and we are recalling in the so-called now, in the present, what just happened or happened earlier, doesn't matter when it happened, we are recalling something, replaying something, and it's still replaying in the past. How can that happen? Only one way. If memory is separate from us and was recorded somewhere else, and we are somehow playing it in the immediate past. Try to understand. This will explain to you even higher regions, if you can understand what's happening physically. Zero time we are living in and calling the immediate past our present. And the past cannot be created if nothing has happened. It has happened, not here. There was no time for it to happen in the physical plane. It could only happen where you could hold the time still and instill memory into it. 
is there such a place where you can hold time still to zero and put memories into it and expand it? Yes. The causal plane, causal body, causal mind at the causal level. That's exactly what was done. That's created destinies. That creates all experiences. Looks like a funny statement. Go there, it'll become a real statement. There is no other way. Just by simple understanding of the nature of time, you will find there is no other explanation you can give for the existence of experience. We are all having experience. And yet it cannot be created here. No way can it be created in zero time, which is the only now available to us. Therefore, our past, now which is past, present which is past, is a recall of memory we are living. What about future? Maybe future may be real, and maybe the memory is coming from future and coming in. Let's examine that too. Supposing we stop doing three things. Hope, fear, anticipate. They are all the same things. They are anticipations. Good anticipation we call hope. Bad anticipation we call fear. Anticipation, neutral. Supposing this, these functions of consciousness stop and these three words disappear from all the dictionaries of the world, there will be no future. Examine this statement. Examine it carefully. If these three things did not happen in human consciousness, no future will exist. No way to have a future. Now comes the interesting part. In order to hope, in order to anticipate, in order to fear, we need time. All these three are in the past. Therefore, future is also past. Past is past, present is past, future is past. Examine carefully. If you can examine and understand this, you'll be understanding how these systems work to create the universe, create physical universe. Of course, verification takes place when you go there. You see this happening. The point I'm making is that memories are creating, it's a replay of a recorded memory, not recorded physically, it's not possible. Recorded, not at the astral plane, not possible. Recorded the causal plane, that's why it's a causal plane, where memories are built out of the mind. Hundred, thousand, trillions, billions, you can, you, any number of memories can be built up there. Packed up into now, spread out in time, in past, in memory. And we recall and think we are living a life of past, present and future. Imagine this. It's happening right here. We never think of it, how it's happening. We are not living here. We are living in the past. A past created by us and replayed as the present and the future. Of course, if you go to the causal plane yourself, that's why I said it's so difficult to describe what's happening there. You will see how destinies are created by the super imaginative power of the mind, which is way above the imagination of the astral plane or the physical imagination of the brain here. That's the power of our self, just with one clothing on the mind. That's how all our destinies have been built. That's how we know that we picked up a destiny out of innumerable choices and said, it's a good game to play, let me pick up this one, like a DVD. We pick up DVDs to play. We pick up a DVD of the self, enclosed in sense perceptions and bodies and playing it. That's what we are doing. Some people think, if we had better sense in the causal plane, you could have picked up a little better DVD. Many of us think like this. They, we think like this based upon our current situation in the play, in physical life. This, I am not feeling good, I wish I had picked up something where I was always healthy. I see I can't afford certain things, I wish I had picked up a DVD of a rich person. I wish I could do this, I wish I could do this. 
This is our physical thought. It is not our thought there. What was our thought there? To the best of my ability to describe, I am going to describe it. It is not very accurate, but the best. First of all, a DVD is just a term, physical term. I am trying to use something which can't be described. I am calling it DVD. Destiny. We are picking up a destiny. All right. When we pick up a destiny, we pick up one life. One human life. Because if there is no human life, with the experience of free will and making decisions to create more events, we have to find a DVD with that. So we find a DVD with high, hum, one human life that will make decisions. And then we decide how long do we want to have the DVD? Five minutes too short. Here we say five minutes too short, we like an hour or two of entertainment. Then we say one life is too short. But we'll create an instrument in the life. And we create an instrument where free will is being used to create events, future lives. With the principle we introduce in one life, law and effect, karma. We introduced a beautiful principle in the destiny we choose where we should be able to create more time to be, have some fun. Because a few thousand years looks like a few minutes here, there, minutes there. We are trying to have an hour, hour and a half DVD. It means having about 20, 30 lives here or maybe more. So much difference in the nature of time. So we pick up nice DVD lasting an hour or so. Some say, no, I am happy with 45 minutes. Some say, no, it should be two hours regular. Two hours means about 300 lives here. It doesn't matter. But we want to pick up a DVD in which we do not lose complete control over our destiny and become just trapped in the destiny just by making reality of it. Let's pick up a DVD with a provision for getting out of it when we want. Okay. I think 30 lives is enough for my experience. It's just about an hour in the causal plane. So we pick up a DVD and the 30th life, we place events which are created because we are creating the destiny. Place events, there we will, in the illusion drama created of many, we will place one amongst the many whom we will call perfect living master. And what we will do in the show, in the script that is being written for the DVD, we will provide that person will speak to us as if he has knowledge of coming back to our original state. We'll come back just by association. We'll make sure that we give the power, our power, to that person so he can effectively bring us back home. So once we do that, we'll be able to come back when the show is over, just an hour or so. We didn't bother what the drama was, so long as a drama enough. A useless life of just simple pleasure, not interesting enough. We like some roller coaster stuff. We like bungee drum jumping. We like going up and down. Some thrill in it. Thrill doesn't come from our ordinary life. Highs and lows. We make sure each scene of that, each life of that has highs and lows. In fact, we should have a variety of experiences. We design a beautiful way to come. This is us who are in the hall doing. What about those who are not in the hall? Many of them didn't care to say which DVD we pick. It's only a DVD. They picked up and will be here for a million lives. They didn't care. Who are these people? Who are these souls at the causal plane are conscious of this? Where did that consciousness come? That we may be trapped and will come back. 
of all the souls living in this universe beyond this planet even all the souls is not more than 10% of those who had this thought at the causal plane where did the thought come from not from the causal plane came from the spiritual plane when there were souls in the in the one this seeking started there if we get into a mind if we get into the play of the mind we should have a chance to come back those who made this decision are the ones who are seeking their true home today in the physical plane they first return to the causal plane and discover what arrangement they made to pick up destinies being played out in three levels causal astral and physical from their their own higher self the same perfect living master who appeared in the physical plane is there working from the other side pulling them up great game it's a game of consciousness it's a game of totality of consciousness playing within itself there's nothing outside of it we are all just an expression of that space time has been created mind has been created all this is expression of consciousness away from itself it's a great play to be able to create distance to be able to create many to be able to create live manys to be able to think everybody had the same consciousness it's a great play we succeeded a plus marks to all of us and to one whose part we are imagine what i am sharing with you is deep inner knowledge it's all verifiable we don't verify we discuss it we want to talk about it you have to imagine things what they may look like we use physical imagination to imagine things beyond time and space it can't work like that please don't imagine go in the root is to draw your attention inwards more inwards more inwards more inwards you will find all the answers do not stop don't be dismayed by the tricks of the mind we have generated a mind which has created the experiences in which he is attached don't go with the mind if you listen to the mind you will never go in you have to not listen to the mind it is temporary arrangement that we made to have an expression of the mind in the form of creation and we are here is temporary mind is temporary this is all temporary go to your real self inside i am very happy i got a chance to share these things i have difficulty to share these things with most of my friends they tell me tell us how we can make more money what business we should go into so then i start discussing business and i say this is such a hidden treasure of knowledge and information so practical but if their attention is not on it there is no way i can help i meet hundreds of people who have no idea of this thing and even if i try to tell them they will say what what do they call it Gr gripish Gr i don't know what they'll say what are you talking about this all all is wild ideas that he's talking about they will not go away from the reality of the current external experience that's the great binding that tied us up just because we created it imagine how we can create a trap for ourselves but thank god we made an arrangement to get out of the trap otherwise neither i would be here nor you would be here thank god we did it who are we thanking thank ourselves we did it thank you very much all of you for spending this time with me these two days i enjoyed sharing my experience with you and i really made friends with you and i am no i am sure many of you are already doing a lot on this path and i hope that what i shared will give you fresh hope fresh anticipation of what you can get while still in the physical body thank you in the afternoon i'll come about 3 o'clock and i believe they have prashad to distribute right and uh, 
as I said, in Montreal, prashad is just blessed food. It's a blessing given for success on discovery of yourself. Blessing works a lot. I'm telling from experience again. Great master's blessing helped a lot. So much. My father, he used to say, what is prashad? Great master said, what master has touched and given to you. He said, master has touched me. I am prashad. Master came to my house. He is coming again next week. Every sheet on the beds I will change every time he lies down. Every pillow I will change. I have eight chairs around my dining table. Every time it will be a different chair. And Master came every time he went to his room, the chair was changed. At the end he said, all chairs are prashad. Table is prashad. All our linen is prashad. All the house is prashad. We are prashad. What else do we need? What he gives us separately is more prashad because he says it's prashad. Otherwise, everything is prashad. Prashad is a blessing that a person with that awareness can give. As you know, I am no master. I am like anybody else. But because I can definitely certify from my own experience that great master Baba Savan Singh was a perfect living master. Therefore, when I give you prashad, a little puffed rice, a little piece of food, when I give you that, it will be with the blessings of my master, great master Baba Savan Singh, who may be physically dead, is more alive for me today. So it's going to be great prashad of Baba Savan Singh. So I'm very happy to make friends with you and permanent friends by giving you that kind of great master's prashad. That's something unusual. We do it at three o'clock, physical local time, <laughs> not estel or caudal time. Thank you.